Hi, in this tutorial, we will learn how to price call options and put options using the binomial option pricing model in Excel. And this template is available on our website. So if you look at the video description, you can download it and we will begin and you'll find the formulas there as well. Uh, and we will begin with a call option first. And uh, later we will look at pricing a put option as well. There are thumbnails in the video description. So if you'd like to jump ahead, feel free to do so. So at the moment we've got an empty template here. So these are the inputs that we need. So five different uh, values. And we basically have an underlying stock and we will begin with a value in the call option. And to do that, we will also need a risk-free bond. Okay, so bit by bit, I will explain how this works. So just bear with me. So let's assume that this uh, stock, so this could be, for example, a one-year period, at the end of a one-year period can take two possible values. So for example, it can go up by 15%. So I'm talking about the share price, or let's say it could go down by 5%. And let's assume in, in this economy, the risk-free rate is 10%. Okay, so this, this will be relevant for the bond. So this we will think of uh, a risk-free bond. Alternatively, you can also think of it as a bank account, right? So you put money in the bank and it will pay 10% interest uh, over the year. The final inputs that we need are the current uh, share price or the stock price and uh, something called the exercise price. So let's say the current uh, share price is $20, okay? Now, exercise price, this is 20, didn't like, yes, here we are, $20. Uh, exercise price is the contractual price of the call option. So let's say it is 20 as well. So this would make it what is called um, at the money option. And the idea is quite simple. So call options become valuable when stock prices uh, begin to exceed the exercise price. So for example, if this was 30 instead of 20, this would be an in the money option rather than at the money option. And what would that mean is that you could basically use the call option, you could exercise it, buy the shares for $20, and you could, if you wanted, immediately sell it in the market for $30. So you would pocket in a profit of $10 per share. Or for example, if the stock price is currently $15, now this option is out of the money because you wouldn't want to pay $20 for something that is currently worth $15 in the market. But let's at the moment fix it as $20, okay? Now, bit by bit, we will construct this template and at the end, we will want to achieve the call option price, okay? So let's begin with the uh, stock part, okay? So this is our... Um, current share price, so this I can already set equal to the current price. And if the uh, stock goes up at the end of the year, we will have this times, oops, sorry, times one plus the positive return, right, 15%. So the stock price will jump to $23, and you can see immediately stuff is updating here. I will explain later what's going on here. So the stock price will up, uh, increase at $23, or the stock price at the end of the year could go down by 5%, right? In this case, we have one plus minus 5%. So the price would fall to $19. How about the bond? So for example, if I invest uh, $1 today in the bond, given the interest rate is 10%, regardless of what happens, because this is risk-free, it will always give me a 10% return, right? So this will be one times one plus the risk-free rate, okay? And this scenario will exactly be the same. So it will again be one times, or let's make it more carefully, one times one plus 10%, okay? So regardless of the stock price, I will get all, what happens to the stock price, I will always get a 10% return on the stock. How about the call option? So what I really would like to find is the call option price. So this is what I'm trying to solve. 
what I would know, or I could know, is the payoffs of the uh, stock, so the option, at the expiry. And here we are talking about a European call option, which means that it can only be exercised at the end. Okay, so as opposed to an American call option, for example. So here, I need to have a different formula. This will be equal to the, sorry, maximum of either zero, because call option never has a negative payoff, because you are not obliged to exercise it. So if it is out of the money, then you simply uh, don't exercise it and avoid a negative payoff. So the payoff will be the difference between the current price, okay, sorry, uh, not the current price, yeah, so the, if the price goes up, so 23, okay, so the current price at this point, at the end of the year, minus the exercise price. And as you will see, this will e be equal to three, okay? Why three? Because if the stock goes up to 23, I can exercise it, buy it for $20, uh, uh, right, by exercising the call option, and sell it in the market for 23, making a profit of $3. How about if the uh, stock goes down? So again, it's either zero if I don't exercise it, or the difference between the share price minus the exercise price. As you can see, the payoff here is zero, right? Because I'm not exercising the call option. Now, how am I going to find this call option, right? So that's actually what we are mainly interested in. So to do that, we will use the binomial option pricing model. And that requires two parameters, which are called delta and B. So delta, so basically the, the, the strategy is actually to create a replicating portfolio. So we will mimic the payoffs of the call option using the underlying stock and the bond. So the idea is that if I can get a constructed portfolio of the stock and bond, which gives me exactly these payoffs, the cost of forming that portfolio should be equal to the call price. Okay. This is called the law of one price, because if this wasn't the case, there would be an arbitrage opportunity. Okay, so delta is the amount of shares I need to buy for the stock. And this is one of the formulas, which, I, uh, like I said, you can see uh, by following the link in the video description. It's essentially the difference between the call option payoffs divided by the difference in the um, possible stock values. Okay. And this is called a binomial option price and model because there are two possible values of the stock, okay? And this is the amount to invest in the uh, risk-free bond, okay? So again, this formula is explained in the uh, link which you can follow from the video description, okay? And it depends on the risk-free interest rate, it depends on the payoff in the lower state, so when the price goes down, and the price at that state, and delta as well. And this, as you can see, is a negative value, which means that essentially this is a short position. And you can think of it like borrowing from the bank. So I'm borrowing $12.95 from the bank. So I'll actually need to pay the bank back with uh, some interest. Okay. So let's look at the stock portion of this portfolio. So at the moment, the share price is $20. And I'm basically getting delta times... Um, S, right? So because I'm getting 0 0.75 shares. So if one share is worth $20, 0 0.75 shares is worth $15. So if the price goes up to 23, right? So then this 0 0.75 shares is worth 0 0.75 times uh, 23, which is 17.25. And this is the value if the share price goes down to 19. Okay. How about the bond? So this is the amount that I'm borrowing at the risk-free rate today. And as you can see, I'll have to pay, pay back something higher because I'm paying back with interest, right? So this is the amount I borrowed. I'm going to pay back more with the interest rate. And the amount I pay back is exactly the same, right? The, regardless of what the stock price is. So now is the moment of truth. Basically, if I form this portfolio of the stock and bond, Am I able to replicate uh, the payoffs of the call option? So if these formulas are correct, the answer should be yes, right? 
So in this scenario, I get a payoff of 17.25 from the stock component of the replicating portfolio and minus 14.25 from the bond component. If I add them up, it is, so if I basically add these two values up, it is exactly equal to three. So these two values match, which is great. Okay. How about the lower uh, case? So the uh, when the stock price goes down, again, these values match as well. We can verify that. So in this case, the stock component is 14.25 and the bond component exactly offsets that, right? So I'm paying back 14.25. So this is exactly equal to zero. So as you can see, the replicating portfolio constructed using these particular figures works. So I've got exactly the same payoffs. Then what is the call option price? That is simply the cost of forming this portfolio. So today I need to invest $15 in the stock, right? 0 0.75. And for that investment, I have actually borrowed 12.95 from the bank. So it is a net investment of 15 minus 12.95, which is 205. So the call option price is 205. That's it. So this is our call option price. Okay. In later videos, I'll show you how this price is affected by, for example, change in the interest rate, the stock price, and so on. But for the moment, let's just stick to basics. Okay. I also promised you to talk about the put option, right? So let's now uh, value the put option. And it's you don't need to change much, to be honest. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to name this put, right? Because we want now a put option. So let's say we are looking for the current price of the put option, which is not going to be 205. So we can delete this. So this will be the payoff of the put option if the stock goes up. And this will be the payoff of the put option if the stock price goes down. Again, I'm trying to replicate uh, the payoffs of this put option using the stock and bond. But these payoffs are no longer accurate. These are the call option payoffs. So what needs to change here is basically I need to multiply this by minus one. Okay, so essentially now I have the exercise price minus the current stock price. And the logic is simple because with a put option, it gives you an opportunity to sell the stock at the exercise price. So why would I sell the stock for $20 if I can sell it for $23 in the market, right? So in this case, I would not exercise the put option. So that's why I have a $0 uh, payoff here. But in this case, Actually, the put option is valuable. So in this case, it is in the money, right? Because I can, by exercising this put option, I can sell my share for $20, whereas in the market, it would only fetch $19. So this would give me an immediate payoff or profit of $1, right? So we can see that. So again, I'm simply multiplying this by minus one because I'm looking at the exercise price minus the share price. And this gives a payoff of $1. And you don't need to change anything else. So this delta formula and B, they still work. As you can see, delta has now become negative and B has become positive. But most importantly, we need to check if the payoffs are replicated or not. And as you can see, these payoffs exactly match the put option payoffs at the end, right? Again, this is a European put option. So what will be the put option price, well, it's this figure here, right? It's again, the cost of forming the replicating portfolio. Now I'm going short in the stock, right? So I'm basically short selling the stock and use that to invest in the risk-free bond. So in total, I invest 5.23. So that's a net investment of $23. So the put option price is, uh, sorry, 23 cents, not $23. So the put option price is 23 cents. So as you can see, it is much lower than the call option price in this case. It should make intuitive sense because in the case of the call option, I was making a profit of $3 here, right? And in the case of the put option, when the price goes down, I'm only making a profit of $1. And that's why the put option is 
less valuable in this case than the call option. All right, that's it for this uh, tutorial. I have, I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, we will have some follow-up uh, videos uh, going deeper uh, into the binomial option pricing model. So feel free to check out those uh, videos as well. And bye for today.